welcome for Marianne Sheridan. Hey kids, welcome to another episode of Ride a Lesbian with me, Marianne Sheridan, your token lesbian. And here we are uh, for our Monday episode of what I promised you on Friday's crazy episode. I'm going to discuss uh, pretty much uh, what it takes to make uh, Ride a Lesbian, and unlike the behind the scenes a couple of Fridays ago, and uh, introduce you like I was planning to do on Friday, but kind of got sidetracked, if you uh, know what I mean. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to introduce you to my babies that you see here next to me, uh, yeah, my posse, my crew, and, and uh, give you a couple of news tidbits to hold you over till tomorrow's episode. So, let me start with my first news tidbit. Okay, evidently it's mating season in Florida, up in uh, northern, central northern Florida, uh, around the Suwannee River area. Um, for flying sturgeons. The key word being flying. Evidently, um, as fishermen, fisherwomen, anybody out on a boat um, having a good old time up there, as they're floating around and looking around, these flying sturgeon are doing just that. They are flying out of the water. It's mating season. Can you blame them? So, yeah. They're flying out of the water, but what happened was they, they, one of them flew out, and they fly out evidently at such speeds uh, that they f one flew out and knocked the woman clear in the head, knocked her out, out cold. Yes, indeedy. So my tip for anybody looking to uh, fish for flying sturgeon in mating season, wear a helmet. On to the next story. And this happened in Australia on one of their airlines. Yeah. So, this guy was an employee, and he was past flying. He was flying free. Evidently, though, his seat was, when he got on board the plane, his seat was already taken by a paying customer. So he did what anybody else normally would do. He spit in his eye. No, he didn't spit in his eye. What he did was he moved along until he found an empty seat that nobody was using, and that's where he sat. Okay, keeping in mind this gentleman that's flying free, his name is Mr. Gay. He isn't gay, but that's his name, Mr. Gay. Okay, keep that in mind. So there you go. Mr. Gay passes up his assigned seat, or, well, the seat that he was supposed to take, and he moves along to an empty seat. Fast forward. The crew has, uh, the plane has mechanical problems. And so they have to shuffle around people and get them off that plane and put them on other flights to get them out. And, of course, they take the free pass flying passengers first. They go down the aisle to where Mr. Gay was supposed to be sitting, okay? They go down the aisle there. They find another gentleman sitting there, a paying passenger. They promptly say to him, are you gay? And he answers shyly, yes, I am. Turns out he is a gay man paying traveler. They promptly tell him, get off, buster. You're out of here. You're past flying. You got to get off the flight first. We got to leave these seats for paying passengers. The other gentleman, Mr. Gay, a few rows back, hears this commotion, jumps out of his seat, and starts explaining that there's been a uh, misunderstanding that he is gay. They promptly take him off the plane. With that, a third passenger jumps up and says, well, hell, I'm gay, too. They can't bump all of us. So there you go. Three guys got knocked off a flight when they were only going for the one employee whose name was gay. The other two poor guys are really gay, and they, <laughs> and they got off the flight. So there you have it. The, air, the airline hasn't put out any statements or anything, but hopefully everything got cleared up. How a simple little misunderstanding can get blown out, though. That's, that's kind of crazy. But it's true, nonetheless. And that's it for the news for today. Now on to meeting my posse. Right next to me down here, you see my Coco girl. My 11-year-old cockapoo who's been through hell and high water with me. And yes, she is gay. Yes, she is. I say this because her little queen is right up here, Giovanni. That's my six-year-old male chihuahua. 
but he belongs to Coco. Okay? Oh, and they are my sound effects. The little guy, you all know him. Come over here, Luigi. Come say hello. This is, this is Mr. Luigi. Lucky Luigi. He is about one, about a year old, a male, and he got, uh, he had to go through hell to get accepted, but he did get accepted, and, and, and these two guys are pals, and she doesn't really bother him because that's her bitch, little Giovanni. That's right. And he likes it. So there you go. Now, there's the Broadway girl, my dog in a cat suit. Because she was raised by Coco and Giovanni, and it's an in initiation thing. And many of you with pets probably know this and have seen it yourself. Coco's the matriarch. When Giovanni came in, she initiated him, gave him hell, let him know that she eats before anybody else, so on and so forth. When Broadway came in, Luigi was the last to the brood. When Broadway came in, she's about two years old, but she was a little itty-bitty kitten. When these kids came to the door and said, do you know anyone who wants before they could finish this sentence? <laughs> Woo! There you go. That's how they stay in line. How's that for improv? So he said, come here, come on up here. Go ahead, come on. So, uh, yeah, so that's how I got Broadway. And anyway, she was brought in, and she's raised with the dogs. So basically, she acts like a dog. Uh, she has some cat traits still, but basically, she thinks she's a dog. And so that's my crew. Um, in all their glory, as you've seen, Coco lets it be known. Listen, you're pissing me off. That's it. They all know their place. They know who's boss and, and how to go around it. Um, and that's my crew. As far as making um, uh, the episodes, as far as creating and, and filming and all that jazz, a couple of you have asked and inquired who runs the camera, the lighting, and so on and so forth. I am a one-woman show. That's right. This is a one-dyke show. That's it. One dyke. You see her? I'm right here. I do the filming, I do the sound, I do the editing. Um, it's all improv. Some days, in fact, I don't even have a clue as to what I'm going to discuss uh, unless somebody sent me in a, a specific question. Uh, but aside from that, uh, many days I don't know what I'm going to speak about until I sit down and I start talking, which is something I don't have a problem with, as you might have guessed by now. So, I mean, I could go on and on for days, but... Thankfully, YouTube, thankfully for you, I guess, but for me, I don't mind. I, I can continue chatting away for days on end, here all by myself. But actually, I'm not by myself, because I know you guys are watching once I put it out there. So that's all that matters to me, and that's what drives me. So, yeah, uh, like I was saying, unfortunately, for me, I can't go past 10 minutes, because that's the YouTube limit. So, lucky for you. So that'll do it for today's episode, kids. And a couple of shout-outs for today. My first one going to Randy down in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, you, Shorty. Uh, thank you a ton for watching and, uh, and commenting and all the positive words of support and encouragement. Really appreciate it, honey. And the next shout-out goes to a, a very special lady out in Louisville, Texas. Uh, her name is Brenda Klimple. I uh, hope I pronounced that name right. Um, thank you, Brenda, honey, for watching and supporting not only Right a Lesbian, but my blogs prior to this brainchild. Uh, and yes, Brenda, we will meet at some point in time in the future. And that'll do it for today, kids. Don't forget, Right a Lesbian. Bye-bye.